This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first thousand people to use the link in the description get a free trial of the premium membership. Time is money and money is coffee. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of tools that you can use to edit your videos faster. Secure the cup, and let's go. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at some of the shortcuts and tools that I use to make my edits faster in DaVinci Resolve. Originally, I tried to make this list into a concise number of tips and tools, but I just kept finding more and more. So instead, I've organized them into little related sections that I've put timestamps for down below in case you wanna hop around. Some of them are keyboard shortcuts and some of them are just kind of basic functions that you can use, but all of them will help you edit your video more efficiently. And to help show us these tools, I've brought my friend along here. Are you ready? Good to go. Could you at least like clean off your desk first? Don't worry, I'll just frame the shot so that they can't see the mess. Okay, you're up. All right, so first things first, if you're coming from another program and you're a little worried about the shortcuts being different and that kind of stuff, don't worry. Up in the top corner, if you go to DaVinci Resolve, Keyboard Customization, you can pick all of your own keyboard shortcuts if you want to. You can totally customize this to whatever you want. There's the ability to search down here. So if you're looking for trim or something like that, you can find it there. And then you can just add your keyboard shortcut by clicking there. There's also some presets built in. So you've got DaVinci Resolve, which is the standard one. Then you've got Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, Media Composer, and even Pro Tools. And as you can see, I've made my own called DaVinci Resolve Dunna. So if you're a Premiere Pro user or a Final Cut Pro user and you've been hesitant to move over, this might make it a lot easier for you. Once you've gone in and done a bunch of customization, you can click these buttons in the top right corner and hit save as new preset. All right, taking a look at navigating on the edit timeline, you can zoom in using command plus or control plus if you're on a PC, and you can zoom back out using command minus or control minus if you're on a PC. It's actually technically command equals, but I always think of it as command plus and minus because zoom in, zoom out, plus, minus, anyway. If you like to use a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can use that to either go up or down on your video or audio tracks, depending on where your mouse is when you start to scroll. Holding down command and using the scroll wheel will go horizontally. Holding down shift and using your scroll wheel will zoom in or out vertically, again, depending on whether your mouse is over the audio or video tracks. And then holding down option is going to zoom in or out horizontally, which we already know we can do using command plus or minus. Okay, the next set of commands is all about small adjustments. The arrow keys can definitely be your best friend here for moving your playhead. So if I want to move my playhead over by one frame, I can just hit the right arrow. And I can do that a bunch of times. If I want to move it over by a full second, I can hold shift and hit the right arrow. And the same works with the left arrow. You can do single frames by just hitting that, or if you hold shift, you can go a second at a time. If you hit the down arrow, it'll go to the end of the clip that your playhead is currently on. And if you hit the up arrow, it'll go to the start of that clip. If I wanna nudge a clip over to the right by one frame, I can hit period. If I wanna move it to the left, I can hit comma. Again, I always think of this as using the angle bracket keys, but technically you're using period and comma. And if I wanna go multiple frames, I think it's five at a time, I can hold shift. So that shift and period, technically I am actually using that angle bracket now and shift and comma. And speaking of little movements right here, we have the snapping tool and we can turn that on and off by using S. And if you've got multiple clips, they'll automatically snap together. And if you're getting in here and you really want to just like move something just a little bit, see, I can only move that about three frames at a time. If I hit the snapping, so I turn that off now, now I can move it as small as one frame at a time. So you can make those small adjustments. And while we're here, one of my favorite modes is called trim mode, and you can get there by hitting T or also clicking here. Now, when you're not in trim mode, if you trim the edge of a clip like this, you notice it leaves a big gap there. But if you're in trim mode and you do the same thing, it automatically will move the clip so that it butts it up against where that edit was. Another great thing about trim mode is that if you want a different portion of your clip, you can hover your mouse over the top half of the video track and then you can move it and you can see which part of the clip you're using. And they give you a preview in your preview window so you can see where the clip now will start and end. And then to get back in the regular mode called selection mode, you just hit V. You can also click right here. Another really handy thing is enabling and disabling clips. So let's say for example, 
I've got this clip and it's just kind of hovering and I don't know where to put it yet and I'm working on some other stuff. I can just disable that clip by clicking on it and hitting D and it goes gray and it shows you that it's disabled right here. And so now I can see all of this stuff going on underneath it. And then when I'm ready to use it, I can just hit D again and it becomes enabled. Okay, these next ones are my absolute favorites. They make such a huge difference as far as your editing speed. But really quickly before we do that, I wanna tell you about Skillshare. Let's be honest, you're not here because I'm pretty, you're here because you like to learn but I am pretty. And that's why I know for sure that you're gonna love the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives just like you and millions of others who are ready to take the next step in their creative journey. Videos like this one are a great way to take in a bite-sized amount of information on a specific subject, but Skillshare goes beyond that by offering entire organized classes with video lessons and projects that can take you even further. For example, this class from Joe Simon, you can learn how to tell a better story with your cinematography, and let's be honest, which one of us doesn't want to learn how to tell better stories? But also if you wanted to learn about product photography, graphic design, maybe more on DaVinci Resolve, pretty much anything you could think of, they've got thousands of classes that definitely have you covered. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. You get unlimited access to all their classes as well as feedback from a community made up of millions. If this feels like a good fit, head down to the description. There's a link there and the first thousand people to sign up using it are going to get a free trial of the premium membership. So head down there and start filling your brain. All right, back to the other guy for that stuff he's so excited about. Okay, so like I said, this next kind of grouping of shortcuts are my absolute favorite, probably the ones that I use the most. First of all, super simple, making a cut where the playhead is, you're gonna hit Command B. Now, let's say we wanted to get rid of this clip. The next one is called a ripple delete. Now, if you just hit the backspace button, you delete that and there will be this empty gap there. But if you hit the delete key, you see that it actually deletes that and brings everything after it back up to the previous clip. This is how I edit all of my videos using ripple delete. I've actually mapped it out to be on the X key because then I can get at it with my left hand easier. So I'll be watching through the clip and then if I want to ripple delete up to that point, I can make a cut and then ripple delete it. But there's an even easier way to make this happen. You can ripple trim the end of the clip. So basically I'll set my playhead where I want to make my cut and then I can ripple trim what they call end to playhead. So the end of this clip is going to get ripple trimmed back to the playhead. And to do this, I just hit shift command and right square bracket. Now again, this is one that I have on a single key, so I just hit W and it does this, and actually I think I got that from Premiere Pro. And vice versa, if I wanted to do the start of the clip, I can hit Shift Command and the left square bracket. It'll trim everything up to the playhead, and then it'll also ripple delete that empty space. So let's say I've got a bunch of clips on the timeline here. I can go through and I want to cut there and there and here. So I'm just trimming off the start of the clip and then the end of the clip. I prefer to edit this way rather than doing in and out points like a lot of people do. So you can use in and out points from your kind of media bin. I just like to dump everything onto the timeline and then just make these quick cuts. It goes so quickly. Those ones get me really excited. Those are like my most used shortcuts. Now, sometimes you'll get into an edit and you'll make some changes on a certain clip and you want to apply those same changes to another clip. So let's say for example, I've got this one, the zoom is at 1.5 and I've changed the position a little bit so the original looks like that and then I've pushed in like that but on this next clip it goes back out and I want to apply that same zoom from the first clip so what I'm gonna do is hit command C which is pretty typical for copy if I hit command V it's gonna just paste that clip but if I highlight the clip that I want to paste that to and I hit option V it's gonna pull up something called paste attributes so now I can choose the parts that I want to paste from the original clip that I copied from onto this new clip in this case I want to change the position and the zoom, but you've got all sorts of options in here, all of your cropping options, your vertical flip, horizontal flip, volume for audio, you've got color correction. You can do all sorts of things from one clip to another, even automation. So let's hit apply. Not only does this first one have the 1.5 times and the change in position, but now this second one has it too. If you see my video on ways that you can apply color grades across multiple clips, this is one of those ways. Here's a nice simple one. If you want to deal with your audio and your video separately from a clip, that was normally linked together, you could go all the way through hitting right click and hit unlink clips, and now they're not linked anymore. And then you can highlight them again and relink them. Now they'll move together. 
or you can just hit option and click on one or the other and deal with it separately. Now, when you go to use them again without having to unlink and relink, they're linked back together. And they'll even tell you how far out they are from each other's original position. This will also work for trimming too. So if I just wanted the audio to be longer, maybe I wanted it to kind of extend out further than the clip itself, I can hold down option and then drag from the clip and vice versa with the video clip as well. Holding option and just using the trim tool. Now we talked a whole bunch about all those kind of ripple functions, but sometimes you're working on a second track and you don't want all the ripples to work on all the tracks. All right, so I've got this kind of multi-layered video set up going on. And let's say I just wanna work on this third track. I don't wanna hit these first two. But if I put my playhead where I want and I use that trim to the end of the clip trick, it did it to the end of that clip specifically, but it also chopped out all of the parts on the other tracks as well. And that's not what I want. So what I can do is I can hit the auto track selector and turn that off on all the tracks that I don't want to be affected by this edit. And now when I hit it, it only does that one track. So now I can just kind of edit away without having to worry about these bottom tracks getting messed up. The other thing that you can do is you could lock those tracks. Now I have to go unlock it if I want to edit it. Whereas if I just have auto track selector turned off, I can still move things on those tracks. It just doesn't get caught up in those quick commands. Well, we've got these multiple layers. Here's a cool one. If you put your cursor anywhere on your timeline and hit Y, it's going to select everything forward on the main track. If you want to select all the clips before the playhead, you hit Command Y or Control Y on a PC. And then you can also do the same thing for all tracks by hitting Option and Y. So that's going to select everything forward past the point of the playhead. And then Option Command Y will select everything on all tracks before that. So that can be really handy if you want to, let's say, just kind of move a bunch of clips. So we can do Option Y to select everything and then we can move it all over. And then let's say you want to get fancy with your timing controls. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this. So if you select a clip and you hit Command R or Control R on a PC, it's going to bring up your retime controls. Now there are a couple options here. There's a little drop down menu with a bunch of different things that you can do with it. Adding speed points if you're doing some speed ramping, changing the speed to certain percentages, reset it, freeze frame, reverse it. But another thing that you can do with this open is let's say I wanted the clip to be exactly up to the end of where this play head is. So I want to speed up this entire clip to be from the start of here to the playhead. All I have to do is bring my cursor up to the top right corner here where I see this different kind of icon. And then when I drag from here, you can see that the percentage changes here. So I'm now at 131% speed and the clip will go by quicker. Now, another thing that you can do with the clip selected is just hit R and then the change clip speed dialogue is gonna come up. Some of the same options in here. So you can change your speed from there. You can change the frames per second or the duration. And you've got some other options depending on what kind of changes you wanna make. And so those are a couple of the ways that you can change the speed of your clip. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Head down to the comments and share any other awesome functions that you think people should know about. And while you're on your way down there, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring. I'll see you next time.